Okay, um, first a shout out to Professor Tricia Forrester who at Mansoir last year presented for me a really eye-opening presentation and she suggested this idea. Uh, line your classroom with whiteboards and have the students standing at them for the whole lesson. That's the simple version. So I took the plunge. That's what my room looks like now when I stand at the end of it. It's a fairly small room, no one really liked it. And you can imagine me as I took the camera, that's actually my view of my class as it works for 90% of every period. Um, here are the students. This is what I, I expected this to happen. This wasn't a surprise. Um, beautiful student collaboration. On this side you'll actually notice two boys here. They've actually, you can see alternate colours in the, in the working out. That's a technique I use to make sure they work together. One's got a black pen, one's got a blue. These two boys actually are very quiet, very shy. They don't actually work together, but they stand next to each other. <laughs> That's good. Um, so here's a typical group working together. Um, something, again, this wasn't a surprise to me, I expected this to happen, so much peer tutoring happening. Unlike my year nine class where I'm in a conventional classroom, I actually have to tell boys to shut up so I can keep talking. They're trying to help each other. I have to tell them to shut up because I've got a whole class. These guys can go for the whole period. This is just beautiful. Um, this is a very low tech classroom, but it's also very high tech because I refuse to give answers to most of the problems I set to the boys and they know they can use Desmos or GeoGebra on their phones to actually evaluate. So in this case, I gave them a very challenging graph to do. These are two unit students. They are effectively doing an extension two level graph because they wanted to have a go. And I didn't give them the answer. They didn't quite get it right. You can see they're stuck in the middle. That's more complex, but they're having a discussion um, in GeoGebra what the answer should be. It's beautiful for concept mapping. So some days the room is just, it looks like one of those mad people's rooms where it's completely full. Okay, here's a more complicated version. Defronting the classroom is what happens. You lose your whiteboard. Um, and for me, this has been really refreshing. You do have to redesign your lessons. Um, if you're interested in the research, look up this, this uh, title, Building Thinking Classrooms and that will give you lots. So this was exactly what I expected to happen. Um, great feedback from one of the students. This boy um, hasn't done a lot of work in six years and the learning support <laughs> teacher came and asked him why did he love this room. He said, Miss, I can't sleep at the back of the classroom anymore. It's totally active. Much more interesting for me though, this was the big surprise is what I got out of it. It's what I call now a highly visible classroom. I can see the whole class working at once. I can instantly see in one look what every single student in that class can and cannot do. And I can adapt my lesson on the fly to respond to that. Students make discoveries, students make errors, all sorts of things happen. Sometimes I'll stop the classroom and we'll all go and look at a whiteboard. Other times I just sit back and let them let them go for it. It's really interesting what happens. So, highly visible. Um, you will get absolutely bombarded with work. It's very active for you as, as well as for the students. Um, I realised later, reflecting on the quality teaching framework, well, one of the reasons it really works, I don't know if you've seen these five questions. These five questions are a way of engaging with the quality teaching framework. If you ask yourself these five questions, you've covered the teaching framework. This is one that the whiteboards excel at. How will I know what they learned? In a regular year nine classroom, when I walk out of the class, I'm not 100% sure what every kid did. With this method, I know what every single student did. So I would highly recommend you consider exploring this option. If you're interested in more, uh, here are some Google keywords to look up. Quickest is to look up building thinking classrooms. And you'll find a very nice, very readable research paper which you can give to your principal and say, this is a really good idea. I've just found out talking to the University of Sydney people, this is how, if I'm correct, all tutorials are now done in first year mathematics. Yes. It works brilliantly, highly recommended. Thank you. Thank you.